Hello and welcome to another 3D Buzz video. In this video we are going to continue work on the Adat Walker and it's a special video because my good friend Mr. Julian Baltutus is joining us aka Count Zero over on the 3D Buzz forums. How are you doing Julian? I am doing fantastic. Well that's good to hear. So where were we last time we uh, we met? We were working on this funny armor piece which started to get some uh, some good progress along the way. I was getting happy with it. So I want to continue on with that. Now I've got a few more images that I'm kind of digging through, and I noticed something. It's really, uh, what we decide to model for certain areas here is very dependent on which model we choose to follow, and we've been seeing this since uh, the early days of this project. <clears throat> and uh, like, for example, take a look right here. We got this funny little indention that right here looks like it's just got a few boxes coming out, like somebody... Uh, did the equivalent of a couple of quick extrusions, and then as you dig through uh, other versions, it starts to look a little different or a little more interesting, depending on who you're looking at. So uh, we'll probably just make something up as we get in there, just something that looks a, a little bit visually interesting. I think what I did is I created basically, like on my model... See, that's a little different. It's got a little spindle or something. I think I did uh, had like like a little boxy thing, and then I just created two pipes... Yeah. And, and they were, like, uh, extruding at a 90-degree 90, 90 angle. Right. I mean, in the end, it's just, it's greebling. It's something there so that people see that there's something there, and it doesn't really even matter what's in there. So, let's see. For starters, though, I'm going to do some detailing on this door. Now, let me jump over here. We can kind of, uh, let's see if I can find a decent picture of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Because I saw something and when I was digging through the references, and I was like, you know, I kind of like that. I'd like to kind of employ it. This is not quite it, but uh, is here, you can really start to see the differences in the various models here. Because now in this model, this door is all recessed, and it looks uh, very, very different. So, anyways, back over here. In fact, here, let's do it this way. Let me grab edges. We'll get this guy. Let's, uh, it's, is it going to let me loop? Julian, it's not letting me loop. Oh, man. That means I'll have to control select this edge. And what we're going to do is just give this a quick chamfer... And I think that'll do You have it. to excuse me, I can't make as many smart comments as I usually can in Maya, since I already haven't used Max in probably over a year. So. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I mean, if you want to make smart comments, that's fine. That's completely within character for you. I mean, yeah, well, I always try to be smart. <laughs> mm-hmm. Is it just, yeah, okay, okay. Sometimes too smart, I admit it. All right. So, uh, let's see. We got these funny little hinge pieces in here that uh, we could... We could throw in... I guess that's how you open the panel. You know, I guess, but it doesn't really look like the hinges are attached in any version of this model that I've seen, so, you know, we're just making something that kind of uh, looks like a hinge as far as I'm concerned. It's just there, you know? All right, so we'll chamfer this. Everybody hope that's not the emergency exit. That would so suck. Well, you know, it's the future, or it's... The, well, okay, it's Star Wars world, so we don't know. Maybe it's some sort of weird repulsor technology, something that just works magically. You know, who knows? Who knows? Uh, the point is, though, we can just draw a box right here onto the side of this thing, which is pretty handy if you think about it. And it automatically snaps to the object. Oh, man. I know. It's just fantastic. Let's take the move tool. We're going to set this to local space so we can slide it up a little bit. We're going to come over here to its uh, parameters. We're going to take the height of this guy and bring it down because I just made that obnoxiously too big. Uh, a couple other things I want to do, too. Let's, uh, let's see. Let's convert this over to an editable poly so I can do interesting things to it. Because at first, of course, we can't do anything interesting to it. I'm going to rip it out away from everything and hit Z so I can spin around it. And if... Uh, I love being at low resolution. I really do. All right, so boom. We'll take out this inside face because we don't really need it. We're probably going to have to do that again here very shortly, but that's okay, too. Let's do an extrusion here. So let's see. Extrude. Actually, let's do a bevel. I'm so used to thinking of them as extrusions because I use Maya so much. And in Maya, of course, an extrusion behaves very much like a bevel in Max because you can you know, scale it out and whatnot all at the same time. So let's increase the height, and you know, we can play with the outline amount just a little bit. And then uh, let's apply. This time let's kill the outline amount, and we'll just take our height and pull it out like so. Click OK. Now, we've got some more internal faces because of that little action that we can take out. So we'll grab you, 
and you kiss you goodbye. That drops down a little bit, but I don't think that's really going to harm anything. I'm wondering, as you're struggling with your camera, is there any way to focus your camera on the object you're currently working on? I have been. You tap the Z key. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I've been doing that all along. Uh, what I've been struggling with is well, being a, a small object, being at low resolution, uh, just little things like that. But yeah, I've been uh, repeatedly tapping the Z key while I've been working. All right, so let's see here. Something else I want to do. Let me try this, see if it works. If we grab the good old symmetry modifier. Yeah, that's promising. Now let's see. Let's switch that over to Y. Cool, now it's going to do the same thing on both sides. Let's slide it. Well, thank you. Let's grab the mirror just by itself. And let's see. Can you go into local mode too? That'd be great. And then we'll just shorten the whole thing up. And that'll make me feel better. Okay. And of course, if I feel better, that's really all that's important. Now, let's jump back over to edges. A little bit of quick detailing on this. And it looks like I grabbed the wrong object because of that lovely select through stuff. Come on, there you go. That's what I want to play with here. So now we're going to grab edges. Now let's loop that out, see how far that's going to take us. Probably not everywhere I want to go just yet, but close enough. You are going to bevel this right now? Mm-hmm. I mean, chamfer. Sorry. Close enough. I mean, it, I use the two interchangeably when I'm working, so it's okay if you do too. I mean, it is a bevel, however you want to look at it. So let's give this a quick chamfer. That's perfect. I love it. <laughs> Looks fantastic. Yeah, let's let's just use it just like that. All right. And I don't think we need a ton of segments here because this is such a small little piece. And let's see, let's pull back a little bit, slide the thing down, push it back into the surface, and maybe even snug it up against that door just a little more closely. And I mean, it's really hard to see what it looks like at this resolution, but it's, you know, it's something. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead and put our material on it, too. And next little thing we're going to add. Okay, these little boxes. Awesome. I love little tiny boxes like that because they're so much fun and so quick to add. I could probably use a chamfer box, but I'm going to try to save geometry by not doing that. So it's a little bit of height. That'll be a box. That would be a box. Very good. Uh, let's go ahead and convert that over. Tap Z. So here's the funny thing. We just tapped Z. Okay, at that time it worked. The sec a second ago I tapped Z and it didn't really frame us up where I wanted it to. So, not to suggest that that operation is unreliable, but sometimes it feels like it might be. Okay, boom. F uh, was it F4? There we go. I'll remember all these function keys. This is a funny byproduct of jumping between many different applications at once. Oh, yeah. Today alone, I've worked in 3DS Max, Maya, ZBrush, uh, Hidus UV Layout, and Microsoft Word. <laughs> Wonderful. And Word was the, the one that really messed me up. Uh, so, boom. Uh, that's probably more than enough chamfering. I mean, this is a, a big lumbering beast, and I don't really plan on uh, having the camera really sit on the door at any given point. In the end, we're going to be playing this in a game, so you know, you'll know you be flying past it. Just a little bit of bevel should go a long way. Does it ever happen to you when you, you work in Photoshop and then you go to Maya, and then you uh, try uh, try to pan the view by holding oh, yeah. down the space bucky? Oh yeah, I, I've done it all, man. Uh, I was trying to do that uh, today. Well, fortunately, in UV layout, it has navigation, which is very similar to Maya. Which has saved me a lot, especially when I've been uh, working between the two. Okay, now these things we've already got. We got some more of these little tiny boxes. We can probably just steal those from something we've already done. So let's see. We've got some of these guys up here. Now these look like they're a little bit differently shaped than the ones that uh, are on that other object, but you know we're just gonna have to kind of get used to that because all these are a little bit different. Every time you look at one of these models, it looks a little different than the last four copies of the model you've looked at. I'm going to apologize in advance. I do have a little bit of a cold, and I really hope it's not going to happen, but there might be a sneeze crawling oh, up on me. Oh, man. Well, then we'll just have to punish you if that happens. No, it's fine, man. 
appreciate the heads up. Because that'd probably startle me and I'd scream like a little girl. And We don't want that. No. Don't or at least that. I don't want that. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Here we go. So it sticks those in there. What are all those pieces? Those are... They're rain gutters. That's right. So that we see when rain falls on the top of this thing, there's little gutters in here that just you know run the water out. Uh, actually, my, those are probably rain gutters because you always see the funny drippy things coming out of them. Anyway, yeah, whatever. I don't know what they are, but they look important, man, because they're just they're always there on every version of the model you see. All right, so this guy's got a funny little door sticking out the side with a couple of lumps. There's some, you know, lumps here, very, you know, obviously interesting and important little pieces of greeble that we should probably pay attention to. So let's see here. Let's go back to creating boxes. Let's see if we can make a box that kind of fits right in there. And we'll give it a little bit of height arbitrarily. And that looks pretty good. So let's move that out. So we can play with it for a minute. Let's convert it. Uh, let's jump in and delete faces. Let's also do some chamfering. So we'll hit edges. Just give me a ring. Can you give me a ring? Awesome. And we'll chamfer. Now, if we kick up the segments, and I'm so happy that Max can do this now, uh, we can round that out, which is going to be very handy. So... Uh, I don't think we need much more than that, but we could kick it up just a little bit higher. I think that's actually going to work from just about any viewable distance, so we'll click OK. Uh, let's grab this face. We'll slide it back in to kind of thin everything down. Uh, let's Control click on edges to grab these edges. Now let's chamfer these as well. And that's going to look really awesome for just a second. And I mean that. It really does look awesome, but it looks a little too awesome. We don't need that much awesomeness. So we'll just kick this up by about one level, click OK, there we go, get out of here, shove this back down onto the surface, hit the M key, copy on our material, and then everything is happy. And we have a pretty box. We have a, a pretty little thing that has been added. So if we hit F4, we can start to see you know bits and pieces hanging off the side of this, which is, of course, all we're really looking for. There was something else I wanted to do. And I've been kind of stalling, and so let me go ahead and just get it out of the way while I'm thinking about it. Let's, oh, get me out of here. I want this thing. Thank you. Let's grab all of these edges. Now, if I grab this and try to hit loop, what do I get? Oh, all the connected edges. That's good enough. It at least saves me, like, a click or two. You planning to give it some thickness? Yeah. I need something. Oh, that's that's Fantastic. so useful. That's That's so useful and beautiful and awesome. I am... Just unbelievably happy that it did that. All right. Oh, what else? Probably just select the rest of these by hand just to be safe now. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Great. Fantastic. Now, here's the funny thing. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm going to try it anyway. Let's kill that base width thing because that just gets on my nerve. Pull the extrusion height in negatively. And it's a start. It's not perfect, but it'll kind of get us rolling. So we'll click OK. And the places where it kind of starts to fall apart are areas like up in here. So let's switch back over to vertices. Hit Z to frame up on that vertex. And looks like we're going to need to go back over to, uh, well, view or some sort of global mode just so that I don't get... Also looks like you got some... Planarity problems? Oh, at least. I'm sure I've got at least a few. Um, we can pr Let's see if we can just knock that out quickly. Uh, by angle, if we pull this down to maybe... Will 10 degrees do it, do you think? Tink. Oh, so close. But I think we can just tag that. I don't know. I don't have this kind of tool in Maya. Well, not without a plug-in. You do have a plug-in, don't you? I do. I thought so. I thought I'd seen you playing with it. All right, so let's see if I just click on the meat planer button, which is hiding down here. Clunk. And that's, Don't have that one. That seems to work. Now, there is a plug-in for that. I've seen it. Yeah, it's actually made by uh, DezFX. Yeah. Yeah. Good old Dez. You know what? I'm probably going to have to pull this down and then replanerize this. But, you know, even if that's maybe not 110% in planarity it'll probably still live i don't know let's kill it anyway so 
Grab you. See, there's a, there it is saving its my its selection again. Isn't that great? Boom. I know. I know. I know. I know. All right. So what else? We need you and you. And they need to be made plainer as well. Clunk. Oh, man. Oh, that's, no. That's awesome. Oh, okay. I got Craziness. You. It's more of this select by angle thing. For some reason, biting me because 10 degrees is a little too much for it to try to take on all at once. We should have left it like that, though. I think that was perfect. Is that box just red? Because it's red? Or is it red because... It's red because it's selected. Are you in these boxes? Yeah. Oh, no. I just haven't put the material on. Oh, okay. Yet. Cool. I'm being lazy. Okay, so I think that's all pretty good and stuff. Um, is, there, is there some craziness up here? Yes, of course there's some craziness up here. I thought we'd fix that, but we haven't, so... We'll have to pull that down. We could probably just target weld that in over here, but it's not that important. This is all just kind of like for a, a shell that's going to be made into a normal map anyway, so... So I'm not going to stress it. Uh, let's see, make planer one more time just to be on the safe side. And now we can jump in here to our edges and start adding a lead bead of chamfer to make everything look pretty. Because in the end, that's what's important. Now what happens if I hit loop? Do we get anything useful? Again, sometimes Kinda. we do. Kind of. At least not entirely useless. Except for that. And that looks pretty good, and we don't need that. What else do we have that's getting in my way? Um, that we'll go ahead and work with. Those, and we'll just leave alone. Alright, I think that's going to do it. So let's give this a little bit of chamfer. Boom. And maybe just... Uh, little more. I'm not going to do multiple segments because I don't think we need them in this case. Again, a lot of that depends on how closely you calculate you're going to be viewing the thing. But that is making the shape stand out nicely. Well, the basic idea is to put it into UT3, right? Right. So, I mean, as long as we're catching some sort of highlight there, I think we'll be just fine. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, cool. Now, there's some other little areas, too, like some more versions of these little boxes... Are we still in local? Yes, we are. Fantastic. So we can just pull that off down here. I don't care what you name it right now because it's not important. And let's see. I think that that had a funny size to it. Not that, not that this matters much, you know. Something like this. It really doesn't make any difference. But if you want to try to be all precise about it. Oh, that's super, awesome. Super. That doesn't work. Let's go to parent mode, and that'll work just fine. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Uh, we can pull one of these over here. Now there's there's like a few of these around. There's like one here, one here, one up here, and then uh, they just, you just look around. So we'll start with these because they're pretty easy. And tap the Z key. Pull that in. You could leave it the same size if you wanted to, or, you know, maybe just change it around a little bit. Let's get out of editable poly mode and put another copy of it up here. Now, where else? Um, we got there, there, there's one up here, one over here, and then there's two up there. So I'll probably have to check again. I, I don't think my attention span will live that long, but we'll try. That's looking pretty good. I slide it out just a little bit further away. Pull that one out. And that seems to be okay. And there's like two of them randomly placed up here for some, I'm sure, really important reason. But we're going to make these a little smaller. Pretty good, I think. And then bink, click OK. Now, let's get just select all these things. Tap 
Tap the M key, apply, boom. There we go. All right, so this is starting to come together. Now, what's next? Uh, we've got, I think that really just about does it for that little plate of armor. I don't see anything else critical here that we need to add. So we could start paying attention to what's going on with this sort of underplate-like piece. Now, on this particular model, all of this looks like it's connected. Like, this little underplate here actually becomes one with all of this. You could treat it that way if you wanted to. Um, but in our case, that would require that we probably take this piece and remove it all together and then recreate it by extruding out an edge, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. I just don't think I really want to do it. Can you copy just a single face? And, uh, um, and just reuse it? Sure. Uh, you mean like, just like extrude this back out? Or what do you mean? Well, usually what, what I do in my ass, if I, if I have like a basic box already in place, mm -hmm. I just like click on a single component, and I usually a face yeah. or several faces, and then just go and extract and have it as a single piece of geometry and then start modeling from there. So I can keep my basic uh, geometry in the same place. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. It took me a second to follow, but yeah. We could. Um, there's no reason, no reason not to do that. What I'm just looking at here is the fact that this gray big hull area is kind of like the same piece as this, at least in this model. We don't have to treat it that way. I, I'm just more or less brainstorming about where I'm going to go from here. Um, that's not entirely helpful right now, and those are too blurry to be helpful. It, it's almost like it doesn't matter. You know, as long as we've got something underneath here, then I think we'll be fine. So, because I've already broken this off, it's, it is its own thing. Um, we can do that, but I think what I'll do is I could just duplicate the whole thing. Let me see, what is this guy's positional coordinates? If we set this back over to world, he's hiding out here, I understand, there's his pivot point, okie dokie. I'm just going to start modeling on this. I think uh, I think the, the shape is so simple that uh, if anything got knocked too far out of whack, I could probably fix it anyway. So, uh, let's see here. There, that We know that in dents, uh, this front piece actually goes back inward a little bit, but it wouldn't be a bad idea if I could get an idea of how much. Oh, there's a good one. That's pretty useful. That never happens. All right, so let's see here. A quick inset. And, of course, that's going to do some wild things here at the seam, but uh, we're not going to be too concerned about that at the moment. We just want to establish some general thickness for this whole thing. Uh, click OK. Let's extrude that inward. That be outward. Well, this is inward. There you I go. I want it inward. But thanks. Thanks for keeping an eye on me, because you, you never know. Uh, let's see. There are some other things that I wanted to keep track of. Now... This lower piece doesn't have like a, a lower lip. So now, if you uh, take a close look, there's actually like that close. Whoa, yeah, that would be oh. close. Are you planning to actually like like um, boolean the center out? Because like the whole like the round troop section, this connection thing, thing yeah, yeah, it actually goes in, right? It does. Um, for our purposes, we I think we can probably just plug it into the side and be just fine. Okay. I don't think it really needs to have its own little uh, Boolean indention to make that work. I and mean, even from here, just generally speaking, it looks like some metal that has been just, you know, butted up against or welded to the side of that thing. Yeah. I'm sure that if this thing were life-size and we were, like, crawling around on it, we could see that it indented and there was some separation while this armor plate made way for the, the hallway there. But I don't think we necessarily need it. Not at, not at a model of this resolution e anyway. If we were doing this for, like, a film production that had to be at super high quality, then, yeah, I'd be, I'd be looking into that sort of thing most definitely. But in this case, nah. Do to do. Okay, so let's see. Let's just take our X translate and we'll zero that out. And of course, that leaves behind a vertex, which is fantastic. So let's fix that too. And did he leave behind a buddy? Anybody we need to fix? Or are we set now? I think we're golden, at least up there. But yeah, I definitely see your point. And under under different circumstances, I'd be interested in in handling it that way. All right, um, let's see. My favorite operation to do inside of Max, which of course is snapping. It's become so much better than it used to be. I'll give it that. Okay, so there we go. That's all snapped down. I think I want to push this in just a little bit further. 
And we can go ahead and create the little window guys that'll pop in here. What is it, Julian? You're about to say something. Um, I can feel it. Well, it's, that was one thing I was debating yeah. with myself when I modeled this. Like, uh, can you go back to the picture? I can. Because uh, on this picture, it looks like the centerpiece is going out, while the pieces on the side are actually going in. But I can never really tell. And some models look different. And on this one... Uh, this is Well, the, the Adat Walker itself is notorious for being different every single time you see it. Even in the movie, like if you watch the film, like uh, one will look different than the other if you really start paying attention. Uh, you know, I would just flip a coin. If you think it would be cooler to have the middle one coming out, just do it. Because it's like you're not going to get a phone call from anybody on the Star Wars Geek Squad right. saying, you know, the, the, the transdorsal door that pops out above the, the troop hallway center, is, uh, you know. And if you do get that phone call, of course, you just hang up on that person and it solves the issue. Now, we do have... Well, nobody ever calls me, so I'm not worried. Yeah, well... Uh, let's see here. That's the top view. That's not what I want. Here in the front view, we actually have a little bit of an indication of where all of that is. Now... All those awesome image planes. I have these awesome image planes, which are really... Right on the money. Uh, they're, they're so much not right on the money that it's kind of, uh, it's kind of alarming and frightening, really. If you if you think about it, so let's see here. I want to I want to check something out. See, so, yeah, here here's how much they are right on the money, and how much I really appreciate them. Uh, this clearly, like the base of this opening, is clearly wider at the bottom than it is at the top. Unless, of course, you're modeling off these image planes. <laughs> So, you know, choose carefully what it is you want to believe about any given thing you're working on. Now, this particular piece, it seems to me like it would be a good idea to break this off, to detach it, so we could do all sorts of uh, mucking about with the geometry. So, let's see, we only have a detach button somewhere in here. It seems to me also that mm -hmm. I would uh, the face you had just selected a second ago, I would yeah. also scale that uh, in Z and in X. In Z and X. The one well, you know, if you don't have it selected right now. Oh, oh. Okay. Well, actually, I've, it's now its own object. Hang on, just a second. Effect pivot only. Center to object. Uh, you mean this face? Yeah. Yeah, man. He's his own deal now. You oh, too late. Him in, in Z and X, you need him to be bigger. No, not bigger. Actually, make it go in so it looks like. Oh, okay. See, the reason I broke it off is because, you know, we're about to cut in these little opening, you know, cutaways and whatnot, yeah. and I don't want to run the edges all over the all over the entire model. It just looks like. If, um, can you bring up the? I can do it. You know, just for you. Images. Let's see if we can find a better one. And I think. Uh, you want the indention to kind of? Uh, let me see if I can guesstimate what you're trying to do here. You want this indention to kind move of, inwards. Go, yeah, exactly. You know, like this edge would slide up a little bit. Right. I can do that. I don't even really need to worry too much about the fact that I've detached it already. That's fine. We can always fix that later. So let me slide this up a little bit. Yeah, I'll do that for you. I can do that. So slide this one out a little bit. Now, anything break down there? No. Cool. Everything's still working just fine. And now we can just take this guy and do the same thing. That way I don't have to step back through undos or anything. Because really, if this passes through just a little bit... It's not going to make any difference. Nobody's going to be able to tell. Okay. So, cool. Fantastical. Now, if... Let's go back to that funny picture. That's almost too simplified. Although, you know, if you've, if you've really sat down with a good paint job, you could probably make that look really cool. Better than they've got it looking anyway, because it looks like it just walked off the showroom floor. All right. So, if we if we come in here... Here's the catch. We're going to have to already kind of have determined how big we want this little troop area to be. Of course, we can also, uh, we could slide these vertices around if we needed to. So here's what I'm looking at. It's a shape that looks kind of like the letter D in reverse. It's a little beveled up here at this corner. That may be a straight line and it might not be. It's really, you know, it's, it's kind of an all in how you look at it. So let's see here. If I was determined to create something like that, how would I do it? Well, first off, I would... I guess i just cut it in. I I'd really... I would love nothing more than just pull this away. What are my... What's my coordinates right now? I'm curious. I want to do something. I want to go to Effect Pivot Only, and I want to 
send the pivot over here to zero. Then I can just take this whole thing and go slide it out here, and when I'm done with it, I should be able to just snap the whole thing back to zero, and everybody will be happy. So let's come over here, take a look at our picture one more time. So yeah, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Kind of like a letter D, not really. A little bit. A little bit. That's all you can ask for. So let's see. Do, 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 do. We got. The now, if you ask me, I'd probably round up, round off a, the bottom just to make it look like it actually like it rounds around the troop section connection thingy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can do that. We I mean, we can do that when we get in here. I just want to get the basic shape cut in, and then we can just add edges and do all the the playing we want to. So, you know, start off with something to get us rolling though. Okay, so that's really, that's about as far as I would take it just to get it started. Then you can start taking a look at, you know, like, okay, so this edge needs to be perfectly vertical. Right. This is not all that, uh, that's, that's a very short distance. This looks like it's perfectly horizontal. You start using these as guides to figure out where all the vertices need to be, but the point is that when I'm working like this, I'll, use, I'll start off just by dropping the vertices down, and then I'll get them where I think they need to be. Now, uh, something that is important, this is a perfectly vertical sheet, so I mean, I could just move there in the front view and everything would be fine, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to set up face constraints, and let's see here. Now, the overall width is something to consider, because like this, you know, we're only working with half of this here, so we got to have enough room for that, which means this needs to come over pretty far, all things considered, because, you know, this would only, there's our, you know, the area where our little middle door would right. be. So we pull this over. Is it also that close to the edge? On the other side, I mean? On the other side, you mean? I'm not sure what you mean. Hang on just a second. Is it that close to... Well, you're already moving the vertices, so... I was moving vertices. Just don't pay attention to me. I'm just babbling. But I, but I like paying attention to you. You do have interesting things to say most of the time. What are you saying here? Tell you, point it out. Talk to me. Um, oh, no, you're all good. Never mind. Okay. Look at me. Just keep going, then. Ah, uh, let's see. We're not moving. I want to know why. Is it the face constraint? Yeah, I guess so. All right. Whatever. It doesn't want to break some sort of supposed planarity that it has found. So make that a nice angle. This we can round out in a minute. For now, it doesn't matter. And... That looks pretty vertical. Of course, I'm sure it's not when you get... I mean, from the image we are looking at right now, mm -hmm. I would say it looks like a straight edge, but I, I think it would be more interesting to have it around it. Like it looks oh, down like, there? Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's really... It's all about how you look at it. What I'm looking at is like uh, here, if, we, if you look at it in the context of the circle, it's really close here, and it steadily gets further away. And I mean... It's like... I got a, a sheet of paper here. You can probably hear it wrinkling. You could lay a straight edge on the monitor... And it's the straight edge follows it perfectly, but you're right. It probably would look a little more interesting if it was if it was a little bit rounded. So I'll think about it. Tink. So we can snap that in, and that's all good. Uh, let's see. Let's grab this guy, and we'll snap him right there. So those are nice and accurately lined up with one another. Then we'll turn snapping off before I break something because I will. Now, next thing is we need to anchor some of these points off before I do too much else, because I'll forget, you know? Let's grab this and remove it. Let's jump back over to the Mighty Mighty Cut tool. It's awesome working at low res when you got to scroll for like a mile to get to your tools. This is the big reason I detached this face in the first place. I can just leave these anchored off here at the edge, and everybody's going to be happy. Right. Um, this guy I'm not going to anchor yet, because we've got another uh, cutaway to add in here. So let's figure out exactly what that needs to look like. Now, this is the one you were saying you couldn't tell if it goes in or out. I'm going to say it goes in. And it's cool if you disagree, uh, you know. It's your call, man. It's, it's your model. my call, man. That's the important thing here. It also looks like this is rounded while this is not. So, But we we might round it out anyway just to make it a little more visually appealing. To be honest, I don't even remember which way I went. Yeah. I might have... Well, the, and the reason you don't remember is because it's really not that important. In the grand right. scheme of things, it just doesn't matter that much. 
Uh, so let's see. Let's split this guy down. We'll do just a little bit of our own beveling here, and then we'll just cut this guy straight across. And there you go. So now... It's not straight. Oh, I know it's not straight yet. Like I said earlier, man, I'm just laying down some basic polygons. You know what I'm saying? Can you uh, hold down the shift key while you... You can, sure. I mean, you can hold it down all you want. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you just like holding the shift key, I mean, that's what it's there for. It's there to be pressed like any button on the keyboard. It's not going to do you any good, but you can do it. Well, I was thinking of another 3D application. Ah, yes. <laughs> Fool. All right, so let's go back to <laughs> vertices. And uh, we're going to snap this guy. So, oh, not in all axes, though, just in one axis. There we go. And uh, let's snap this guy in one axis as well, and this guy in one axis as well. This, it just, mm, the overall thickness has me concerned. I have a feeling that everything here is going to be slid to the left a little bit. That's just a gut feeling I have, but we may need to drop on like a symmetry modifier to make sure. And we don't have to do this, it's irrelevant, but I'm going to do it anyway. We'll pop that over to make sure. Straight edges make neat. me so happy. Yeah, me too, uh, even though sometimes I avoid them or forget to include them. Okay, so now, let's see here. Uh, let's turn off snapping for... Now, if you were actually planning to um, UV map this thing in mm -hmm. order to have it textured later on, that I, I think, like, from my experience, it always makes things easier for me if I have a lot of straight edges. Especially on mechanical models. Uh, on some more organic things, like uh, if you're doing like characters and whatnot, where your texture is going to be a little more flowing anyway... I don't know. I, I find myself kind of going back and forth like it doesn't really matter, especially if it's very fleshy. On mechanical things, man, as many straight edges as you can get. It just it makes everything so much easier. So let's see here. Uh, let's grab you and you. I do try to, to warn people sometimes on characters because uh, some people will get so just determined to have those straight edges like maybe across the chest or across the leg that right. they avoid the ability of their vertices to add some nice flowing geometry uh, they they shortchange themselves because they're trying to keep everything nice and horizontal i have seen that all right so we pull that in maybe only about to there that looks pretty good Let's take care of this face, make it go away. I also want to go ahead and just drop on a symmetry modifier to see what this is going to look like with two sides. Symmetry! Boom! Perfect. It, the symmetry modifier did exactly what I wanted it to. All right, uh, so we switched that to Z, apparently, and that it doesn't look too bad. seems to work pretty well so far. Um, of course, it needs some chamfering because it's just hard to tell what's going on. So we can watch the end result here. Uh, let's grab you. Can I loop that? Sure, you can. If I grab you, I can sort of loop that. Let's make sure we've got all these guys selected. Now let's put on at least one level of chamfering. Now, here I could actually see myself employing a segment or two. That looks funny. And the reason it looks funny is just because of the angle at which these guys are meeting, um, might be better if I no, if you if you terminate the end, yeah, that was I was going to ask that if you terminate the end gone beforehand, would that make your life easier? Well, it it probably would. Like, go ahead and, and slam that down first. There's something else though that I think might make it a little easier, and that would be if we went ahead and had some level of rounding in these two edges, like we do here. So let me go ahead and do that real quick, because uh, we can always terminate it on the inside later or not, and it's not going to make any difference. But we'll grab you out to there. Now, this one's a little more interesting. I'm just going to grab that, that edge by itself, and we'll chamfer these guys. Now, we only want one segment, and we're going to push this out just a little bit more and click OK. Now, of course, that's going to look really weird up here. We'll fix that presently. Let's go ahead and... Uh, jump over here to vertices, we want to target weld you up there, and then you could just leave it like that, unless you don't want a triangle, and then what I would do is I would remove this, and I would find the cut tool, terminate it up, and just terminate it straight up. That'll do, that'll, that'll do. That'll do, pig. And then, uh, let's see, I think where I would go from here is I would make... Well, first I come over here to the front viewport, and let's do a cut straight across this beast. 
In fact, I'm so determined that it be an, a nice straight edge that I will actually come in here with the move tool in vertex mode and I will do some snapping if I can. Apparently I have something selected that I don't want to have selected. Oh, I hit the space bar. That's what did it. You can't hit the space bar in this application the way you do in other applications. What does the space bar do? It locks your selection so that you cannot select anything else. And sometimes you don't want that to happen. Now, is it just me or is that not I'm snapping? I'm just trying it? to think of a situation where I would actually want that to happen. To lock your selection? Yeah. Eh, it depends on how you work. Does it lock like all objects in your scene, or just just one? whatever you have selected becomes all you have selected? And you can't select anything else. Ah, okay. No, so, that's actually quite useful. Yeah, I mean you can come up with ways to use that. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're going to come in here, grab this edge, and I, I did it again apparently. So we'll get rid of that. That's just me asking dumb questions. No, 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 no. Um, it's not a dumb question. Three years max. What is that? Never used it. <laughs> It's it seriously has been a long time. 3ds Max is a word processing application. <laughs> I think for which was, which version are you using? This is Max. This is 2008. 2008. So that would be Max 10, I guess. I think so. Yeah. I think the last one I used was Max 7. Oh, there you go. No, Max 8. I don't know. All right. So, oh, I need the move tool. We need to snap this. Make sure these are all nice and organized and they, they don't look nice and organized to me for some reason something's missing looks like a good call for make planar i just wanted to double check and make sure they were right behind each other because I, I do want them to be planar but i want them to be exactly the same as what's going on in the front too so hang on just a second. tink See, i don't want to accidentally break planarity anywhere else and using make planar there might do it. I think that there's, that just fixed it though. I think I'm good now. Okay, so now with that done, um, we could you know run an edge right there. Let me see if I can get away without having to do that. Cause I'm lazy. And let's get you, and we'll loop that too, and then we'll add on this guy. And cool. Now. We do the chamfer, we add on the segments, we pull this way down. Cool, let's just click OK and see what this looks like. And get out of all sorts of selection modes. Um, press this, there we go. Just make sure everything updates. Yeah, it's not bad. What does the reference say? Um, the reference says, hi, my name is Reference. Um, it says that it looks actually pretty close. I think so. Um, I think we. C I think it's a little too deep, but I don't think that matters enough. I think we could leave it just like it is, and everything would be fine. Um, we could turn off symmetry, or for now, we could delete it all together because we've got a whole bunch of other things that need to be symmetrized later on anyway. So we can just right-click to pop that back over to zero. This no longer lines up, so we've you know obviously built this to the wrong altitude, or we're following something that is not entirely accurate. Now, what we were following is this guy, uh, the image plane. So we could not to suggest the image planes are not accurate. Oh no! Oh no! We already know they're not entirely accurate, but I think in this case the image plane may be right, and we do need to kind of uh, at least pull this part up a little bit. So. Jump in here, grab vertices. Do I have the right object selected? Yes, I do. Okay. There we go. They're in there someplace. That's going to look a little weird. In fact, you know, pull oh, out yeah. and start to create those funny little sheets. So we're going to have to, we're gonna have to split that up and fix it. And that looks a little strange, too. Well, couldn't you just terminate that one edge down and that yeah, should fix that, the problem? Yeah, that's what we'll end up doing. So, but we'll pull this up. And I just tried to navigate outwards like you would inside of Maya. That doesn't work. Um, so, yeah, here's what I would probably do here. Let's go back over to edges. Let's, well, 
one, we could probably get away with pulling this whole thing up a little bit too, just so there wasn't such a, a huge difference in elevation. And of course, that's going to help a bit. But then I still don't like what that geometry is doing. So let's go over to edges. We can remove that one altogether. Uh, let's get out our cut tool. Now we could cut that straight over. And what can we see from the front view? Anything useful? Eh, a little. gonna let us cut all the way over there do you think maybe I think it just did but I don't know if it went all the way over I don't know if it did what I wanted it to that's a user view by the way I hate those I was wondering about that because the image plane was like way off in the distance yeah it's I love it when that happens uh, so let's see let's so we want to set this over to a back view because the back is actually the front which of course makes a lot of sense all right so Yeah, that kind of works. I yet have to see a 3D application that has a perfectly working split polygon tool. It is not buggy and does not act up. I'm sure there's one out there. There we go. It's probably just user error, but that seems to keep everything kind of nice having that anchored there anyway. Or at least you don't end up with something that's so wildly concave that it creates issues like what we saw a second ago. Now, yep. what, I'd probably go ahead and pull this all the way down, too, just to be on the safe side. Are you still planning to round this off? This area? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. I just don't know. I almost don't... I almost kind of like the, the straight edge look of it. I mean, I don't know why. Maybe it's just, you know, like the, the whole... Star Wars thing of seeing so many planar shapes everywhere. There's already little discrepancies like uh, this whole thing, if you didn't notice, is slightly rounded. <laughs> We're not doing that. But um, I'm going to hold off. We can always add that in later once we get to adding this little tunnel section in. Right. We can look at the two against each other and, th and say, you know what, I think that needs to be rounded and then we can do it there. For now, though, I think we've got to a pretty good stopping point. So I'm going to go ahead and call this video to a close. I'd like to thank everyone at 3D Buzz for watching. Of course, I'd like to thank Julian for bearing with me and sitting in on this video. And a big shout out to all of our member sponsors because you are making all of this free content possible. And we will catch you guys on the next video where we work on the AT-AT Walker. You guys take it easy. See you guys later.